Hello, in this short video I'll be giving you a quick rundown of my senior project on volumetric rendering that I completed in the fall of 2017. I logged 174 hours while learning OpenGL and exploring the vast domain of volumetric rendering, all with the goal of deepening my experience with C++ and exploring the crossroads of my curiosity for manipulable terrain and 3D graphics. In the end, I implemented a direct and indirect volume rendering technique, those being sparse voxel octree raycasting and the antiquated marching cubes algorithm respectively. To complete the project, I referenced a research paper titled Volume Visualization and Volume Rendering Techniques for cursory knowledge about volume rendering and the original marching cubes publication from all the way back in 1987. Beyond that, I derived my sparse voxel octree representation and raycasting algorithm from an NVIDIA technical report published in 2010. Up next, I'm going to explain some key characteristics of the two techniques that I chose to implement, then dive into a quick demo and discuss the results of my project. The marching cubes algorithm is an indirect volume rendering technique, meaning there's an intermediate step in rendering a set of voxels. In this case, a mesh of the topology of the volume is generated and independently rendered. To quickly summarize the algorithm, we generate a mesh of each individual chunk by iterating a marching cube as seen in figure one through the voxel array. We process each cubical subregion by analyzing the voxel at each of its eight vertices and interpolating the location that each edge is intersected. In figure three, you can see the 14 potential mesh configurations published in the Marching Cubes paper. And on the right, you can see the results of my implementation. So overall, the algorithm has an order n time complexity, where n is the number of voxels in the volume, and the algorithm is very flexible and efficient, but can struggle to cope with large data sets that are often found in this domain. Compared to the Marching Cubes algorithm, raycasting into a sparse voxel octree is much more complicated, but thrives in scenarios where Marching Cubes would struggle. In my implementation, based on the 2010 NVIDIA technical report, only the topology of the terrain is stored in the octree, and the root of the octree encompasses the entire terrain. Each child node then represents a subsection of the parent voxel. A simplified tree structure and a quad tree can be seen in the bottom left to help visualize the octree structure. In order to keep the chunk system and sparse voxel octree consistent, the voxels are only created at the maximum depth of the octree in my implementation. So to represent a 64 by 64 environment, an octree of depth 6 is required, as 2 to the 6 is 64, which correlates to the 64 possible voxel positions along each axis. As such, sparse voxel octrees can grow to be incredibly large, and the time required to generate them grows exponentially with each additional layer. The results of this will be discussed later, and it's pretty interesting. As for the ray casting, the algorithm works to traverse the octree until the ray has either left the parent node or hit a leaf node. In theory, for each frame, a ray would be computed for each pixel and only the voxels found would be displayed. And in order to get this fully functional though, I will need to adapt my algorithm to utilize the GPU. There is a plethora of nuance to accomplishing this and I highly recommend you read through my report and peruse my source code. But ultimately, ray casting has a constant time complexity. Even though the task itself is computationally expensive, it can be used to render any volume of voxels with any view distance with constant time. As someone who's always dreamed of infinite view distances in game, to find a technology that achieves just that is incredibly exciting. Each volume rendering technique has unique strengths and weaknesses which provide insight to the intrinsic properties of each paradigm of volumetric rendering. As you can see here, the chunk and marching cube mesh generation times grow linearly as chunk sizes increase. Compared to the octree generation, which grows exponentially, jumping from roughly 3 to 26 seconds when doubling the size from 128 to 256. Luckily, you usually only have to generate the octree once, and the strength of the algorithm comes with the raycasting. As you can see in the bottom chart, to calculate the raycast for each pixel of a 600 by 800 frame, nearly half a million raycasts takes anywhere from 27 to 51 seconds on my processor, depending on the environment size. Interestingly enough, I also tested an octree of depth 9, correlating to a 512 by 512 voxel environment, and it did not disappoint, clocking in at about 13 minutes to generate, but only 56 seconds to render, 
further exemplifying the exponential time complexity of generation in consistent rendering times. I gained a plethora of experience working on this project, and moving forward, plan to continue to evolve my program into a more robust voxel engine. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you have any recommendations or questions, I implore you to get in touch with me. Regardless, thank you for your time, and have a good one.